Okay, and let's maybe go back to border here. I think the uh, hole's a little bit too small, so we'll select the inner border here. And we'll just scale it up a little bit in the top view. Alright, so let's scale it out a bit. Alright, maybe something like that. Okay. Alright. And to be on the safe side here so we don't get any artifacting when we render, uh, we might want to add uh, a couple of additional segments here up the sides. Okay, so we'll go back into uh, Edge, right, and we'll just grab these edges on top here. Okay, all six of those around the uh, top, and we'll do a ring, okay, and that should select them down to the base for you. And we'll just do a connect. And we'll just do uh, one side with no pitch, no slide. And OK. And in the top view here, we'll just connect this up to this circle, each uh, segment here. All right, so we'll zoom in here on the top. All right, select these two verts here, which are these two. OK. And we'll just hit connect, and I'll cut the edge uh, across for us. OK, so we'll do that for each one. The side here, we'll grab this one and the one across from it and connect. And we'll just do this for uh, each edge loop we add it. Okay, so grab these two at the bottom and connect them up. And last one over here. Okay, it's just like that. Alright, so we have our loops continuing uh, up the flat sides here right to the hole. Alright. So now we can start working on the actual bowl here. We'll go into border and select the inner border. Okay. And then we'll go back into the front view. All right, we're going to go to the move tool here. And we'll just hold down shift and drag in on the Y, all right, to extrude the edge in a bit. Okay, just like that. All right, so we'll bring it down a bit and then we'll just go to scale and we'll just scale it in, all right, just to taper the edges. Okay, we'll just repeat this process until we shape out the, the entire bowl. Okay, so we'll shift drag down again. Okay, we'll scale that in a little bit more. Scale this one in. Okay. And I don't think we need to go super deep here, right? So maybe something like that. And just you just want to round out the edge here, right? And let's maybe do one more small one here. And we'll scale this in quite a bit. Okay, just to roll out the bottom. Okay. And I think that's probably okay for the depth. So with the inner border there selected, I'm just going to hold down shift and drag right in the center of the triangle here. Right, get those pretty much closed up, and then we'll control click vertex. So we got the verts around the hole selected, and we'll just weld this. Right, so open up weld, and we'll just put like two or something in the amount, and hit enter. Okay, so everything snaps to one vert. Go ahead, OK, and when you're done, just make sure you only have one vert selected. Okay, so let's see how that looks. Okay, so that's not looking bad. We'll have to add some smoothing groups to it now, but I think we're uh, in pretty good shape here. Okay, so let's maybe chamfer down this uh, edge around the top of the bowl. And to do that, we'll just go into Edge, we'll select one of the vertical edges at the top ring here, do a ring on it, then we'll control click Polygon, and then control click Edge. All right, so we have all the edges we selected. And then in the front view, we'll just turn off into our back facing here. We'll hold down Alt and we'll just select the sides and bottom ones. All right, so we just have the top uh, ring selected or loop. All right, and then we'll do a chamfer. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Let's take that up a little bit. Maybe 0.15. We'll hit apply and we'll bring that down slightly. Maybe 0.07. And OK. All right, now it'll give us the rollover at the top that we need.
right? So I think we can start adding some smoothing groups now. Let's go to Polygon, go back into the top view, right? And we'll just select the uh, center polygons there in the bowl, right? And we'll just grow the selection until we get up to the outside edge here. Okay, just like that. And we'll go down and we'll put this on a smoothing group. There we go. And we'll just do one or something for this one. Okay. And we'll just see how that looks. Okay, and you can see that'll smooth that out pretty good for us. Okay. So let's go to edge here and we'll just work our way down the side. Okay, so let's grab an edge here on the corner. Right. And we'll hold down control and we'll just use the uh, spinners here for loop to go down. Okay. And we'll go one more maybe. Okay, so we have seven edges here selected and then we'll do a ring. Control click polygon. Right, and we'll put this on two. Right. And we'll skip the underneath ones here. Let's go back to edge. Let's grab this corner one here maybe. Right, let's do a ring on that. Put this one on three. Okay. Whoops. And for this roll over here underneath this edge, I'm just going to select these three edges here. Okay. Ring them. Control click polygon. We'll put this on a separate group. All right. Just so we have uh, a sharp edge. Let's do five on that one. And we'll move down. We'll skip the chamfers. Grab this one here, the single edge. And we'll do another one on that. Let's do seven. Okay. And for this piece here where it's uh, smoothed out, all right, let's just select maybe this edge and we'll just work our way down. Okay. And we'll also include these ones here. All right. We'll stop right here at the flat face underneath. Okay. Let's do a ring on that. Control click polygon and we'll put this on another group, say nine. Okay, grab this edge here, put that on ten. I'm gonna skip these ones here. And we'll skip the sides for now. We might put those on one after, but we'll see how it looks. Alright, so let's grab these ones at the bottom here. Grab an edge on the outside of the section as well as this one. Ring those. Okay, I think we'll just leave the chamfers off on these ones. So let's put that on, say, 12. And down here, we'll just grab that one, do a ring, and put that on 13. Okay, we'll see if that looks okay if we need to add any more to it. So we'll turn off our edges with F4. See how that looks. Okay, so I think that should be good. Okay, on the top here, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this with the compressor or not, but you can see we have a little bit of a weird um, sheeting problem around the top here. All right, and that's caused by this uh, edge loop in here. All right, and if we render this, we probably uh, will have some artifact. Let's just check it out. Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, right around the top of the uh, lip. Okay, so what we'll do here is just go into edge. And we'll grab an edge on each side here, okay, because we won't be able to loop this one. All right, so just grab an edge on each side, and then we'll do a loop. Okay, so we have the entire ring selected. And we're going to go to scale, and we're just going to scale this back a bit just to give it some more space. All right, so we'll put it pretty much in the center of the uh, width here. All right, we'll see if that fixed it at all. Okay, so that seems to have taken care of the problem. Let's get out of edge. All right, and we'll just name this. Let's call it fountain. And we'll also just change the color to black here. Okay, and I'm just going to uh, put the shader on there. All right, so we'll unhide all here and see how this looks as far as size.
Okay, I think that's pretty good for the size. And the last thing we need to do is just put the water spout uh, on top here. Alright, so we'll do that now. Okay, so let's just select the uh, fountain here and we'll hide on select it. Okay, and we really don't have uh, a good picture of what this looks like here. Alright, so I'm just going to make something up quickly. Alright, so let's maybe go into the front view again. Okay, and let's zoom in a bit on this. We'll uh, grab maybe a plane. Alright, we'll just draw this out. Okay, let's also center it. Alright, we'll get rid of these segments. And let's just check the size here. Let's push it back over to the edge. Okay, I think we can go a little bit bigger than that. Let's just take the uh, length up. Let's do maybe 3.2. And let's do maybe 1.2 on the uh, width. Okay, let's take it up a little bit more. Let's do 4 on the length and 2 on the width, maybe. All right, we'll scale that in a little bit on the width. Let's do maybe 1.5. Okay, so 4 by 1.5. We'll convert it to edible poly. Okay, and let's see. Let's go into edge. We'll select the uh, vertical edges. And let's add a couple of segments here of connect. Okay, so let's do maybe, say, 8 with no pinch, no slide, and OK. Right, get out of edge here, and let's just bend this over with the bend modifier. Okay, so we'll take this up a bit. Let's do negative 90 on the direction, and we'll bend that over a little bit more. Let's do maybe about 50 or so on the angle on the y axis. Okay, let's also move it a little bit out here so we can see the uh, full length. Okay, so we'll convert that to edible poly now. And let's see, let's go to vertex. And I'm just going to delete the two bottom uh, lines of verts here, All right, just to shorten it up. Right, and let's also maybe rotate it a little bit in the left view. Maybe like that. Okay, we'll also move it back a bit. Okay, so let's put a shell on. Okay, and we'll right click the outer amount and just give it some inner amount here. Doesn't need to be too thick. Let's do maybe. Point uh, 0.2. Okay, and let's convert this to a pulley again. And let's see, for the base, let's just maybe pull the front out uh, a little bit. So let's go into polygon, we'll grab the two bottom uh, front pulleys and extrude them. Let's take that way down. Let's do about a one or so and OK. And in the left view, we'll just uh, go into vertex and just modify this a little bit. Okay, so let's see. Let's maybe pull these front ones down. Okay, let's grab this bottom one here, these two of them, and we'll just pull this back so it's got an angle on the bottom. Okay, let's maybe pull it right back here. We'll grab this one here, and we'll just kind of mold it to the uh, bowl there a bit. Okay, and these front ones will probably come down a little bit. Okay, 
Okay. And let's just grab the back ones here. We'll shape this out a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to pull this back. And I'm going to pull this over a little bit. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Just pull them back. And let's also maybe give this a little bit of uh, a tapered shape. Okay, so let's go into vertex here. We'll go into perspective view. And let's see, let's, let's maybe just grab these loops in the front view. Okay, maybe these, these ones here, from here up to here. Okay, and we'll just scale these in a little bit in the uh, front view on the X. All right, just to get a little bit of a taper on it. Okay, maybe something like that. Then we'll uh, just select the middle two segments and bring them in a little bit more. And let's grab this one down here. Take that in a little bit. As well as this one here. Might just bring this uh, third uh, loop down out a little bit more just to uh, smooth it out. Okay, and let's also maybe go into edge and grab an edge here. We'll do a ring this way and let's do a connect. Let's do maybe four segments and okay. And in the front view, let's grab the middle segments here. Okay. And I'm just going to move these out in the left view to, to kind of round over the top. Okay, so we'll pull it up like that. Try to keep it in alignment. Okay, and then we'll grab the middle two. And we'll pull it up a little bit more just to round the top over. Okay. So just like that. And let's see. Let's maybe go down to the front here. We'll go back to edge and let's just grab these four edges right here on the front. Okay, and we'll control click vertex. And in the top view, we'll just round this out a bit. Okay, so we have some shape on the front. Okay, so we'll move those out and then we'll just select the middle two pairs and kind of round it over a bit. Okay, and the corner ones might be able to go back a little bit, so let's just manually select those. Grab these two here, as well as these two on this side. Okay, and we'll just push them back a little bit more. All right, that'll give us a little bit of shape. Okay, let's just turn off vertex here. We'll hide on select it. Okay, and let's go underneath, and we'll just delete these bottom polygons that'll be inside the uh, bowl. Okay, so those 10 on the back there, let's delete them. And I think we'll turbo smooth this, so let's just add a couple of support edges here. Alright, so we'll go back to edge, we'll grab an edge at the top, and do a ring, and a connect, and we'll do one segment, slide that up to the top. Maybe about negative 70 or so, and OK. And let's also add one right here. All right, do a ring on that and a connect. And we'll also do that negative 70 at the bottom here. OK, and we'll need a couple of support edges uh, through this section. So let's do a ring on that edge and a connect. And we'll pull this back a little bit here. Let's do maybe negative 85 or so and OK and we'll also add one along the front so we'll ring that edge again and we'll leave that one at uh, negative 85 as well and OK let's go into the left view here I'm just going to go back to vertex and I'm going to grab these two here I'm just going to straighten this out a little bit better OK so it'll be more even Okay, and we'll do another support edge right here around the front. 
Let's do a connect on that. We'll do two segments on this one with no pinch or no slide, sorry, and we'll just pinch that up a bit. Let's do about 60 or so on the pinch. And OK. And finally one through this section, I think. Let's do one segment, no pinch, and we'll just slide that up a bit. Let's do about 85 or so on the slide. And OK. And we'll just even these out again. I mean, this is really quick and uh, crude. It really doesn't uh, matter if it's perfect. It's such a small detail on the entire model, so you won't really notice it too much. Okay, and let's also add some vertical ones here. So we'll grab an edge there, ring, and connect. I'll take this down to the other side here. Let's do negative 60 on that one. And we'll do the same thing on this side, ring that edge, and connect. And we'll do that the same. Okay. And finally, just one along the top here. So we'll ring that outside edge and connect two segments. No slide. And we'll just pinch them apart slightly, maybe about 30 or so, and OK. All right, and we'll just put a turtle smooth on and see if that looks uh, OK. All right, not exactly a masterpiece, but that's OK. Right. I'm just going to turn off the throw smooth here. Uh, you can see we had a bit of a artifact on the side. All right, and that's just because the edges are so close together on this uh, corner here, right here. All right, so we'll go back into vertex. And let's go down and put our edge constraint on here. All right, and we'll just grab these edges along this uh, line here. We'll just space them out a bit, so just pull them down. We'll grab these ones here and we'll pull these ones up. Oops. Do you select that one? All right, just to get some space between these uh, three of the edges, and that should fix that problem. Okay. Alright, let's see if we can maybe bend this over just a little bit more. Alright, so I'm going to drop down into Vertex. I'm going to go into the left view. Alright, and we'll just select the verts down to this point maybe. Okay, and let's turn on Show and Result here by clicking that button. And I'm just going to rotate this a little bit more. Oops. Let's take off our edge constraint here. Just rotate that a little bit. And then we'll just straighten it out. Okay, let's see if that looks a little bit better. Okay, and that's uh, definitely not perfect by any means, but uh, I think it should uh, be good enough for what we need it for. Okay, so we'll unhide all here. And we'll just fit this in somewhere. Okay, let's see. Let's maybe move it over onto the other side. Let's just uh, hide everything else besides these two pieces. Right, and we'll just move this over, and let's just rotate it 90 degrees maybe. We'll stick it on the uh, wide side. Okay, and also zero X and Y here, and we'll just push it back. Okay. All right, we'll just fit it into the lip here. Let's maybe come down a little bit on it. Bring it out a little bit more. Okay, maybe something like that. Just make sure that the uh, base is actually intersecting the bowl. Okay. And I think that's probably about the right size. So now we'll just add a little bit of a water spout to this and that should finish it up. Okay, so we'll hide on select it again. And let's hit Z here. We'll go into the top view. We'll grab a cylinder. Okay, we'll just drag that out somewhere and give it a little bit of height. All right, we'll just move it into position. Okay. Let's see. Let's do a radius of maybe 2 or 0.2. Okay, maybe. 
0.25. Whoops. Okay, we'll give it an extra cap segment here. We'll take off the height segments. And for the height, let's do 0.7. Okay, we'll convert this to edible poly. And let's dump the bottom polygons. So let's select them all and then deselect the top and sides. So we just have the bottom cap select it. We'll delete that. Okay, and let's see. Let's just do something simple here. We'll uh, go into edge. Let's oops, select one of those top ones. We'll loop it. And let's scale it out a little bit. Okay, then we'll go into polygon. And we'll just select the top polygons here. Okay, and we'll do an extrude. Let's bring this down quite a bit. Let's do maybe about 0 0.1 or so, and OK. And then we'll do an inset. Take that way down. Maybe about 0 0.06 or so, and OK. And then we'll just punch this in maybe. So we'll do an extrude and just bring it down a bit to a negative amount. Okay. And let's go to edge. We'll grab an outside edge. Let's do a ring and a connect. And we'll do two segments. We'll pitch them apart a little bit. And we'll move them down slightly. Let's do about negative 15 on the pinch and negative 25 on the slide. And OK. And then we'll do a chamfer. Take this way down. Maybe about 0 0.03 and OK. And then we'll just select an edge on the inside of each one of those chamfers and ring it. Control click polygon and extrude it. And we'll do that local normal. Okay, and we'll just take the height up. Let's we'll give it a couple of bands just so it has a little bit of extra detail. Let's do maybe 0 0.03 and OK. All right, that's really, really quick, but uh, it's good enough. All right, so we'll just chamfer down some edges here. Let's grab this one here. Let me change the color. We'll loop that, and let's chamfer it. Let's do maybe 0 0.02. And let's see, let's grab this top one inside and outside. We'll just tighten that up a bit, 0 0.01 or so. And I think we could probably just do the rest of these all in one shot. So grab that inside one, this one, all the way around the band. Okay. And let's do a loop on those. And we'll just chamfer that down really tight. Let's do 0 0.005 and OK. And on the inside, we can do that one too. Let's loop it and chamfer. And we'll do that the same. Okay, and we'll smooth this out with a uh, turbo smooth. Let's do two and ice line. All right, that's uh, probably good enough. All right, so we'll go into the front view, and we'll just rotate this. All right, to match it up, and we'll just push it down into the surface slightly. Okay, and let's uh, grab both pieces here. We'll change the color to black. And we'll put the shader on there. And let's unhide all. And we'll see how this looks. Okay, I think that's probably fine for size. And like I said before, that's a really, really small detail. Uh, you'll never really even notice that. Okay, so I think that'll pretty much complete the model as well as the tutorial. And we got it pretty close uh, to the reference here. Uh, ours might be a little bit taller and that's why it looks a little bit more uh, narrow. Okay, but overall it's uh, pretty close. And I might just quickly scale down this roof a little bit more. Uh, it still looks a little too uh, bloated to me. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom back here in the front view. And let's go to scale. I'm just going to slightly scale it down uh, on the Y axis just a little bit more. Okay, maybe something like that. Okay.
Yeah, the roof could definitely use a little bit more work. Uh, if you want, you could go in and actually chamfer down the edges, and you'll definitely get a better result uh, if the edges are chamfered uh, when you render. But uh, I really don't have time to do that for the tutorial, so I think I'll uh, wrap it up uh, now. All right, so I hope you found it useful, and I hope you uh, maybe picked up a couple of techniques and uh, get a good result as well. Okay, so I think that'll about do it, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.